Hi, and welcome to the Nucleus Nail channel. So, Elliot and me decided to exchange works. And not just some works, but the worst possible works we could create. So he's gonna make the worst possible cosplay for me, and I'm gonna create the worst possible post-apocalyptic costume for him. Hi, I'm Dmitry Daitsev from Nuclear Snake Studios. Let's start! Military camouflage fabric is the basic of creating any post-apocalyptic outfit. I mean, that's what you would realistically take. Do not ever listen to people who talk about taking anything other than military fabric. So what I did here was uh, cut this bag up and I've also cut a uh, neck hole right here. So it can be worn like this, like a protective vest. Awesome, right? And I also added this uh, radioactive button because everyone knows that radioactive means uh, post-apocalypse. So you pretty much have to include this symbol. Alright, and if you do include this, then never ever distress that button, like Mark Cordori does in this picture. Why would you distress it like this? Just leave it brand new, like out of a store, because you know, in bunkers you would find new items, so there is no need to distress stuff quite as much as people talk about it. And it's really simple and you don't need to care about like how your edges look, or just cut it up, be brutal. Post-apocalypse is not about design whatsoever, since it's post-apocalyptic, it has to be 100% just brutal, you know, just, just do it, just do it! This looks awesome, because post-apocalyptic design is all about chaos, nothing else, it's just chaos all the time. You would have found things like this, you would have found them in a bunker. Now it's time to put on some pants. It's a different pattern because you gotta keep, you know, the confusion, the chaos up. You don't need any consistent color scheme. You have to take a different camouflage pattern than the other part you're wearing, right? Because then it's interesting, it's like unique, no one else does this, it's, it's like really super awesome. Now we improve our super awesome military pants even more and do something that literally no one else ever has thought of, cutting off one leg. You just take it like this and you just, just cut it off. So it has to look exactly like if you have used some sort of scissors or knife, like it has been done on purpose, okay? because. In general, like spending too much time on your costume, that's for losers. If you're not done within half an hour, then you're not doing it right. I mean, think about it realistically. And realism is like the only one thing that's important for costume design. On the other side, I want some leg protection. So I'm gonna take this really thin ABS sheet without any padding. Padding is for losers, thick materials are for losers. And I'm also not gonna distress this because in a bunker, you would totally find a new sheet like this. I mean, think about it. In a bunker you can find anything. If on a LARP or on Wasteland Weekend someone goes like, why does this look so new? You always say, f*** you, you're a loser. I found this in a bunker and it means that you are cool because you understand how things would work in the real apocalypse. And at the same time, you also, your, your character is more cool because your character found this new piece in a bunker and their character is running around with dirty stuff. What a bunch of losers. Some people would say like this edge, it's like gonna cut into your dick, stuff like this. It's like not safe, not comfortable. As I said, post-apocalyptic stuff is all about being like tough, like I am. So just toughen up and like wear stuff that's like uncomfortable as shit. And if you're on a LARP, right? and one of your uh, armor pieces falls off, then you just just call stop, stop, and everyone has to stop, it's an emergency call. Like for paramedics, other shit like this, like unimportant stuff, but if your armor piece falls off and it's like totally your fault, you can just use the stop call anyway, and make everyone wait until you fix your armor, and that's what I always do. All right, and now it's time to add the bottle cap, because uh, how else would you tell people that it's like post-apocalyptic and not like, Steampunk. I mean, if it was steampunk, you would be legally required to cover yourself in like uh, what it's called cog cogwheels. But since it's post apocalyptic, you have to use at least one bottle cap, and you have to fasten it in the most shitty way possible. Like this is needle and thread, and this is like a piece of sheet metal with sharp edges, so it's gonna wear through. But don't worry about that. Again, like don't take too much time. Don't don't think too much. Just 
Just put it somewhere. Also, some people worry about visual composition, like does it go in the middle? Is it symmetric, asymmetric? Don't worry about that shit. Just, just do it, man. Like, just add it like here, and you're good to go. And stitches like this, they're totally cool. Like, just make it chaotic. Just, just put them somewhere. How's that look? Right. Yeah, I'm the best. And now we're gonna add some bags to to my hips. So. This is like also military bags and stuff, so it's like brownish, so that means fast apocalyptic instantly. And this is not, and it's cool because it shows that like some things get damaged, some not, it's like deeply philosophical. Also this big bag, it's like also totally good, you can collect a lot of items into it. And don't mind that it's like made of a cheap material, that's exactly what you want, because I have another secret for you. Uh, if you're spending too much money on creating your costume, if you're spending more than like one dollar total, then you're doing it wrong. Right, and now I get kind of confused how to tie this, so I do what every post-apocalyptic warrior does, it's... Use this. You, you would find this in a bunker. It's awesome duct tape, you just, just use it like this, so... Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Oh god, uh, don't worry where your bags are exactly at, if it's gonna slap you in the dick as you run or not, that doesn't matter. And again, if it falls off, you just call stop, stop, emergency, and then they have to wait until we fix it. I can also not go with a silly hat like this, I have to be serious. So, um, I'm gonna put off this hat now, and I'm gonna use this uh, military hat. We're gonna do, you know, some crazy stuff that literally no one else, no one else except me, has done before. I'm the first. I'm pretty convinced of that. I'm gonna add a feather to a hat. That's a crazy, right? It's... Whoa! Holy shit, I'm good. And I'm gonna do it using this duct tape, because that's what, would, what you would... You would use this realistically, right? You would find this duct tape in a bunker, and you would also find this feather in a bunker from a bunker rat, or something like that, or has feathers, I don't remember. I didn't watch out in biology. I also need some shoulder protection, so I found this. Like, it, it's like not real metal, but I'm gonna like take metal spray paint. Just... Yeah, well, this looks realistically like metal. You don't need to cover the entire thing. You know, just a bit is enough to indicate it's metal. Just, just do it like this, just do it like I do, I'm the best. Realistically, you would at some point get hurt in the past apocalypse and you would have like a bullet hole here But you can just you know simulate that effect by having that spot repaired on your armor like this Just do this and you will look tough like you've seen combat action. That's cool. Let's let's get to the to the facial stuff like this and of course you need a red bandana to cover your mouth and stuff because you're an operator. You're, you're tough, you're tactical, so... And it has to be red because... for reasons, so... Just, just do it. How do I look? Yeah, I'm the king. And you also need a gas mask with a suitable host. Like, don't get a fancy host, just get really cheap. I don't know, put it... Put it here, like this. How do I look? Yeah, yeah, I'm the shit. So now it's time to grunge it up a bit, just so that the other people that are like, oh, grunge it up, grunge it up, so they shut up. But we grunge it up a special, really cool way. So you see here, I have some paint, and the key is, like, when you do your grunging strokes, just leave it like this. It, it has to be obvious that you have done this, and never, ever spread it out, make it soft. Just, it has to look exactly like someone took a bit of paint and, like, did this. Yeah, totally dirty, but totally authentic, so just just do this. That's all you need to do. And, like, also here on the pants and on the bag. Totally awesome. I'm not grunging up this, I found this in a bunker. And uh, this is gonna be my totally cool weapon. It's, it's a baseball bat made out of metal. Like, I know what you're gonna say, baseball bats have, like, a different form and stuff, and they're not so long, but... Me choosing this has different reasons. First of all, it, it is LARP safe, so everyone can shut up and let me be awesome. 
And second of all, it's longer. You know, so while it's a baseball bat in the game, I can reach people better and win wow. because that's what it's about. And also check out those totally realistic metal effects here. And I'll show you how you do the best metal effect. Like you, you take, you take like, like a knife, and then you just do this, and it looks like damage on metal. And if you want to get fancy, you do it like this. Like there has been a sword hit like this and like this and they cross on the same spot. How crazy is that? You might wonder what about the back? I'm not doing any work on the back. Well, it's like lifting weights guys. You don't work on your back. No one sees your back in the mirror. So why work on your back? You just leave it as it is. Find it as it is. Just don't work on your back ever. Oh, Jesus. I... How do I look? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, uh, that was the goal of this video, I hope you folks like this, and I also hope you could learn a thing or two, despite it, you know, being full of just negative examples. So, uh, yeah, again, in no way making uh, fun of newbies, uh, quite in the opposite, I like to see people learn, that's why this channel exists. But I thought it would be cool to poke fun at some of the stereotypes that, and excuses that basically often keep people from having an awesome costume so yeah i will see you folks soon in the next episode until then like comment subscribe share this video with your friends whose costumes are too good and need some downgrading and uh, also support me on patreon it's the first link in the video description and until then uh, jesus this sucks and now do some shaky cam for edit yeah, the best camera effect ever. Thank you so much, Elliot, for creating this effect.